been so preoccupied with a big life change, a big move, and then been very busy doing summer content here on my channel with the summer fragrances that I completely forgot that I haven't done a collection video in a long time. And there's one that's way overdue, one brand in particular that is very popular and it's way overdue. I promised you I would bring a collection video and I just realized that I haven't done that. So in this video, I am going to review and rank in the order of preference my Tom Ford perfume collection. I think I have 13 bottles of Tom Ford fragrances that is in my collection. I mean, that's quite a lot. It's one of my more larger collections. I would say I have Killian and Mikolaf, the largest collections, but this collection, my Tom Ford collection is close behind. I have like, gosh, like an insane amount of Killian, like 30 something. But you get the idea, this is a pretty large collection. So I am going to review each and every one of them and I'm going to rank them in the order of my preference. Like what do I like most, what do I like least? It's really hard to say least with Tom Ford, but you know what I mean, okay? So let's jump right in. Hi my lovely people, welcome back to another fabulous fragrance video. I've got my Tom Ford babies right here, my Tom Ford perfume collection. Oh boy, I love Tom Ford. Actually, you know, you guys know Killian is my most favorite DNA in perfumes. I love Killian perfumes and then right there neck and neck is Emmiclaf. Those two houses I just adore, adore, adore. And then there are new houses like NATO that are really giving them the run for their money, you know? Like the NATO's come climbing up pretty quick. And I have like, you know, Shavu and all these like Jus Parfum, all these new brands that I've discovered that I'm collecting more and more fragrances from. But Tom Ford will always be a classic. Um, just like Killian would be a classic for me, but Tom Ford, you know, it's that original innovative perfume brand. I'll start with the one on the very bottom and then I will go up to my number one spot, okay? Now, remember this, Tom Ford is so good, even my least like, you know, the one that I like the least is one of my favorite perfumes in my collection. So. Remember that when I rank these low, that doesn't mean they're bad perfumes, that just mean, or it doesn't mean I don't like them. The entire Tom Ford collection is pretty up there for me, but comparatively speaking to the other Tom Ford fragrances, they rank lower, that's all that means. So let me start with my number 13 spot at the very bottom. This is a fan favorite but the formula has definitely changed according to my lovelies who have been with me for a long time who are bigger friend heads than I am. Uh, I've been told by several of you that the formula is definitely different. They changed the composition um, so it's not the, the old version is better but the new version is pretty darn good too but the old version is better. I think like the ylang ylang in the old one was like more intense or something. This has ylang ylang too. This is a vanilla fragrance, a smoky vanilla if you wanna call it that. This is of course Tom Ford Vanille Fatale. Now this is the new packaging with the new composition. Well, the notes more or less are the same, but apparently there's a slight difference maybe in the concentration, I don't know. Something is apparently different. I couldn't compare this to the old version because I don't have the old version, but I added this when they released it with the Vanilla Sex. These two got released together. This is a re-release and that's a brand new one, a new fragrance, new composition. So Vanille Fatale, simply put is a very 
smoky vanilla, if that's really the best way I know how to put it. Pardon the echo in this room, you guys. I'm filming literally in an empty house with just my perfume display in the background. I'm so devoted to this channel that I didn't let anybody touch the perfume display. I wanted to film more videos for you before they took it down. So I held on to it so that I can film more videos for you. Today is our last day to pack up and leave and I'm still filming for you guys. That's the level of dedication that I have. I hope you guys appreciate that, that my devotion, my dedication. Okay, Vanifata is a smoky vanilla. This is on the number 13 spot, the last preference, only because it's to me a little bit too smoky, too, uh, how do I put it, too intense. Uh, that it kind of teeter-totters on a very unisex level, like on, on a unisex balance. It can very easily lean masculine. Um, it is not my number one favorite vanilla, but I think it's a masterpiece. Just the composition is beautiful. It's also very kind of resinous. I know that, that this has a lot of benzoin, which is a, a resin that has a little bit of like vanilla vibes to it. Super like resinous, smoky vanilla with really strong woody nuances in the base. There's mahogany wood, I know that. That's one of the reasons why I think it's pretty strong. It's a very smoky, woody vanilla. Smoky woody resinous vanilla and it has I know roasted barley which I think is really nice it gives a, a very um, Delicious kind of twist to it. I've, I have another perfume in my collection that has barley. I believe is it the Zerjoff Dama Bianca? I can't remember but yeah, this is Beautiful the only reason I am ranking it low is like because I'm not really into uh, super this is not ambery but I'm not into super ambery perfumes and super smoky woody masculine unisex leaning fragrances this is actually not masculine perf don't take my word the wrong way it leans slightly masculine to me but it's perfectly unisex but when, when I wear it a, a woman you know women when women wear it it smells pretty nice and sweet vanillic I think on men it might pull a little more woody with their chemistry, but it's just not my type of fragrance that I gravitate towards. It's not my my genre, you know what I mean? Like my category that I love the most. Um, but if you love like super ambery perfumes, but you also like super woody, smoky perfumes, then you would love this. Uh, it's a masterpiece. I believe the original version had like ylang ylang and I'm not sure if this one does. I feel like this also has like a bit of a myrrh vibe. When I say smoky, kind of incensey kind of vibes that myrrh gives, I think it may be I'm smelling myrrh and that's what's making it too intense, too smoky. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of a large dose of myrrh. Uh, myrrh is Look, one of the oldest perfume ingredients, you guys, dating back to Egyptian times, okay? So myrrh was used for perfumes for centuries, centuries, thousands of years. Um, and it's a really good, good perfume note. But I'm not a huge fan of super smoky or incense or, uh, this is not really incense but like super woody or ambery fragrances. Uh, but if you like that type of fragrance, you would love this at the number 13 spot, Vanille Fatale. And then I have Vanilla Sex. Now, you're gonna say, but you said you love Vanilla Sex. You did a dedicated review and that you really loved it. You said you love it. Yeah, I do, I do. I do love it. And it's super unique. You know why I love it? Because it's super duper duper, super duper unique. No one, no brand, none of the perfume houses have ever made a vanilla this unique. You gotta give it to Tom Ford for coming up with the most groundbreakingly unique compositions. 
same with this one this is no different vanilla sex is not your typical vanilla let me start with that okay this one this is a super polarizing fragrance either you love it or you hate it <laughs> i've had people saying things from it smells like doll hair to it smells like cat pee wow i mean the range of comments i've gotten and i've had people saying i absolutely love it it's the most divine vanilla ever to smells like cat pee okay i mean it is how polarizing this fragrance is no it doesn't smell like cat pee i mean i'm not lessening your experience to me it does not smell anywhere near like cat pee not sure where that comes from but I've read comments that said that this is such a uber unique vanilla. I'm gonna actually go ahead and, you know what? I'm gonna spray it into the um, this thing because I'm already wearing my fragrance of the day, which is Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, by the way. Oh my gosh, I can't understand why people don't get this. Some people, it's like a 50-50, don't get this. Maybe it's more of a 30-70. Um, most people love it. Oh, this is such a super stylish, fashionable type of vanilla, very edgy, it's an edgy vanilla. There's an almondy nuance in here that is very kind of almost marzipan like, but that vanilla is very hand in hand with the almondy marzipan vibes. This does have a little bit of what people are referring to as doll hair vibes. I don't necessarily think that it does that much, maybe like a teasy bit, but does it smell like doll hair the way some of the Barbie perfumes smell or does it smell like doll hair the way uh, Dior um, Hypnotic Poison does? No. There are people who compare this to Hypnotic Poison by Dior. I see maybe like a slight similarity but not really uh, they're not comparable at all they're not even in the same ballpark really to me I mean there's a slight maybe a little but this one you guys I know that this has like a very particular specific type of vanilla this fragrance features vanilla tincture from India, it's a particular type of vanilla. It's very unique therefore, not just that, but the entire composition itself. It has very deep and bright vanilla notes and it smells very addictive and pretty fashionable, stylish, glamorous even, if you ask me. And this vanilla tincture that's in this fragrance was specifically designed for Tom Ford. So it's like a particular proprietary vanilla note. Okay, so which is why you will not get this vanilla anywhere else, which is what I adore about Tom Ford. You guys, Tom Ford just does unique standout type of fragrances. You have to admit it's undeniable that Tom Ford DNA is like no other, very unique, you know? Um, so yeah, I adore this because it's so darn unique and it smells glamorous, stylish, what have you. Uh, but remember, it's a polarizing fragrance. By the way, for both of these, I wanna give you an update on performance. This one's a, a beast, if you wanna use that term. I'm not a fan of that word, but it's a strong fragrance that lasts forever and ever, ever, ever projects really well and sillage is great same with this pretty long lasting um some people i've seen maybe like a, a handful of people say that it doesn't last on them but most people's experience is that it does last okay so we're moving up the up the scale now okay and then we have this one right here unfortunately i believe this has been discontinued this is one of the black orchid flankers or orchid flankers this is tom ford orchid soleil this one is a very summery very kind of along the same lines as the soleil blanc um, this one is a very refreshing almost like sparkling tuberosey fragrance very summery very solar you know what i mean when i say solar like so 
solar fragrances are fragrances with solar notes like white florals that are summer, summery or grow up, grow in you know tropical places like tuberose, jasmine, ylang ylang, yada yada, and it usually has other tropical notes. But this one is not necessarily exactly solar. It has a couple of solar notes, but it screams summer for sure. I know this has a very sparkling tuberose note, meaning it's very effervescent in the smell. There's lily in here, so I know there are like a handful of people who absolutely hate lilies and they can't stand it. So if you're one of those people, you're gonna hate this. You do smell the lily in it. I like lilies. And this has a very addictive, almost deliciousness from the chestnut and the whipped cream in the base, which kind of reminds me of, this is her, right? That fragrance, uh, which has chestnut and whipped cream as well, but it goes in a different direction entirely. That one is, you know, like very creamy and all that, but this one isn't that creamy, even though there's whipped cream in here. It's more like actually sparkling with a little bit of sweetness and a deliciousness in the base. Uh, it has like orchid, obviously it says orchid soleil. So it's beautiful. It's not my number one favorite. And the number 11 position is orchid soleil. Summertime fragrance, I love it. Lasts pretty well. Performance is pretty good. I would say the performance of all Tom Ford fragrances, even if I forget to mention, usually pretty good with the exception of a couple which I will mention here. Speaking of which, here's one, Neroli Portofino in the number 10 spot. Neroli Portofino is one of my husband's favorite fragrances, actually on him. Uh, so I have actually donated this to my husband, okay? But every now and then when I am in the mood, I would, I would take it and wear it. He likes citrusy, fresh, refreshing fragrances for summer like Emil Kalaf Gin and Tonic, which he doesn't ever put down. He loves that fragrance. And he loves this. He likes Giorgio Armani. He likes those too. Anyway, so this one is a, uh, starts very sparkling, effervescent, with a lot of citrusy notes. Very, very, very sparkling, very light, very refreshing. Loads of citrus notes. Screams Portofino Coast Vacations. Screams yacht vacation, screams high end, very polished, very, uh, oh, this has got all these like bergamot, mandarin orange, lemon, all these effervescent, sparkling, fresh citrus notes in the opening. And it has a little bit of lavender, I think, with that soothing effect that lavender has. Some, you know, fresh spice notes beautiful white florals that are very fresh, you know, orange blossom, neroli, well, neroli portofino, better have neroli. I believe jasmine too. And it has a very nice, you know, kind of, I think it has a little angelica, which gives it a little bit of that slight green rooty vibe like that angelica has, you know? And musk, uh, amberette, I think also um, in here. My husband's one of his favorite fragrances. He actually loves Tom Ford fragrances on him and on me. So this is like a very big one for him. He's bringing this on vacation along with gin and tonic. So yeah, you can understand how much he likes it. The problem with that, as I said, it's one of the two I have on here on the table that don't perform that long, you know. That's about like a three, four hours, if that, and you just have to respray. It's citrusy, so it kind of very effervescent, so it doesn't last too, too long, which is a problem with a lot of the refreshing, fresh fragrances. Number nine, right here, this is Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. Does it mean I don't like it? No, I love it. It's just there are better ones in front of it, okay? This is such a beautiful, effervescent, sorry to use that word again, but again, very effervescent, sparkling kind of uh, summery fragrance. Again, like Portofino, very yacht, you know, vacation type uh, vibes. Has a slight coconut hint, but not your creamy coconut, but more like coconut water. Very refreshing. Loads of citrus notes in here too. I know it has white florals, maybe some yellow florals like jasmine, maybe ylang ylang a little bit. 
maybe tuberose, definitely tuberose. I think I can smell the tuberose. It has like a slight spicy hint in the opening because I think there's a slight bit of cardamom, but not your strong cardamom, very almost unnoticeable. And, and that pink pepper with the bubbly, happy opening, you know, again, adding to that effervescent nature of this. There's a very slight hit of, hint of pistachio, which I don't think is very noticeable at all. I think it's like blended really into the background, you know. This is such a beautiful, refreshing, high-end smelling, very Victoria Beckham type of vibes fragrance. The performance isn't the best, but it's also not the worst. It's kind of medium performance for me, five hours or so, which is average. Okay, so Soleil Blanc in the number nine spot. And then we have this one right here in the, was that the number nine? So this is number eight. This is Stamford Rose Prick. This one is a rose fragrance, but it is a very earthy, herbly kind of a rose. Let me explain what that means. Mm, this is a very kind of sultry, like herbally, you know how like cypriol oil or davana make perfumes very sultry, it's a herbal kind of note, very like sultry herbaliness that it gives, so this one has that too. This actually has a weird note in it that adds to that herbally sultriness, turmeric, you guys, believe it or not. And this has a pretty good dose of patchouli, but it's not your dirty, no, like, barnyard type of patchouli at all. It's a very earthy patchouli that makes this smell almost like, you know, a rose garden, like where you can smell that earthiness in the garden with the rose, with a dose of sultriness from the herbally notes. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Very kind of sexy, you know, but if you're not a fan of patchouli at all, no matter how good it smells or how different it smells, don't get that one because you, you do smell the patchouli. But it's a rose fragrance first and foremost. It's kind of like slightly jammy, the, the rose in it, if you want to get, get an idea. So it's kind of like a slightly jammy, herbally, sultry, slightly earthy kind of fragrance. If that's your type of thing, then you'd love it. Okay, so in number seven spot, we're moving into the, the Black Orchid uh, ones. This is Tom Ford Black Orchid Voir Fleur. Okay, this one is a, a very strong, ylangy, langy, sexy, solar type. It's the same like sexy, sultry, dark, vampy kind of vibes that you know, Tom Ford, the original um, Black Orchid has, but not that vampy. It's like, not really vampy either. I'm trying to figure out. It's very sultry like it, but without maybe the darkness, the dark side, the baddie vibes, right? This has a slight little baddie vibe too, but it's because the ylang ylang and, you know, all that like notes they added to this flanker, this one, is more like a sexy sultry for summer nights, okay? A lot of like, there's vanilla, there's of course sandalwood, uh, even a little lactonic vibe in here. A lot of uh, notes that it shares with the original Black Orchid, but not all of them obviously, but added different ones as well. I think the original has ylang ylang too, but this one is, the ylang ylang in this one is very prominent. Like you can smell the ylang ylang with the spicy notes and the other sultry notes. Okay, so that was number seven. So number six is Tom Ford Black Orchid, the original OG number one, very first fragrance Tom Ford released, Orchid, Black Orchid. Um, this was apparently, I don't know if this is true, this is like one of the fragrances Michael Jackson liked. I didn't, I don't really see this as a, that much of a unisex fragrance, but I guess it, could be unisex. My husband absolutely loves this, which kind of surprised me because this is not his usual 
category that he likes. He likes those, you know, like marine kind of aquatic, like sea vibes, salty vibes, sexy skin vibe type of perfumes like Nubi Mar or uh, Rose Saltifolia, you know, or, or Room 1015 Wave Tile. That's like his jam. He loves that stuff on me and on himself, like only like the, the men's perfumes. But this one, it's not really usually what he gravitates towards because it's very dark, sultry. Um, you know, like, it's kind of like deep, dark, gourmet fragrance. It's not usually his type, but he loves this. He finds it very sexy. This one is super earthy too because there is a truffle note that gives it the delicious gourmet but also earthy vibes to it. This does have ylang ylang too, I'm pretty sure. Some citrus notes, some other florals, there's definitely orchid. It's a little smoky, whereas this is not really uh, you know, smoky. This one has a chocolate note too, I think, and a little bit of patchouli. You can smell the patchouli. Combined with the truffle, the, the patchouli brings out that earthiness, but it is kind of gourmet, you know, because of the chocolate and I'm sure other gourmet notes too but it's it's got this dark vampy sexy sultry vibes definitely a cold weather fragrance you do not want to wear this anywhere near summertime anywhere near warm weather okay if you happen to live in a warm climate just wear it on cooler nights cooler fall winter nights i know that your weather don't shift too much but there are certain months the weather is still a little cooler at night so always choose that type of time to wear this. This is such a beast of a fragrance. It is so strong, so potent, lasts forever, projects like crazy, and Sia just massive. Same with this one, if I forgot to mention, and actually if I forgot to mention, the Rose Prick is very long lasting, very, very long lasting, and projects really well as well. So yeah, Black Orchid uh, is that baddie, you know, Black Widow, um, black magic woman, dark vampy type of fragrance. And here's another one in the number five, five spot, Tom Ford Noir Parfum. There is also a Tom Ford Noir um, for, for men, but this is for Parfum, that's for, me, for women. Unfortunately, this has been discontinued. I just don't understand why fragrance houses do this, where they discontinue the most legendary fragrances they ever make. I don't know if they're discontinuing it to try to bring it back like they did with Vinny Fatale in new packaging. I'm not really sure, I hope so. But this is sold out. I'm sorry you guys to have to review one that's been discontinued. Actually, this one's been discontinued too, pretty much, but you can still get it on certain like you know, sites. I will list and link all of this obviously down below in the description box. Tom Ford Noir Parfum is just the ooh, most sexy, again, baddie, black magic woman. That dark magic kind of vibe. I, it's very like sweet. It's a very sweet, ambery fragrance. It's literally, you guys, if you ever decanted this fragrance, you will see the juice is like super almost red orangey because of the large dose of amber in here. It's a very ambery, very sweet fragrance. There's like a coffee note in here, which is like a, you know, South Asian dessert. It's like an ice cream uh, that's very creamy. So there's that lactonic creaminess in here. There's, I think, opapanax or elamai or some kind of uh, balsamic note in here too. So it's very balsamic. It's a very sexy balsamic sweet, ambery, sultry fragrance for colder months, just like Black Orchid. Again, if you live in a warm climate, just wear it at nighttime on cooler months. Very sexy, massive sillage, lasts forever, projects like crazy. You'll have to shower twice to get it off your skin. So, so, so sexy. I have, do you know how many backups I have? I have three backups for it, yes, because I don't want to ever run out of that. If they ever reformulate it, I want the original formula, okay? Even if the new one is better than this one. I just want that formula. Okay, so that's number five. Here's number four. This is Tom Ford Jasmine Rouge, which is red jasmine, basically. 
Oh my gosh, this is the one of the most bewitching narcotic jasmine ever. Very sexy. There's a very, you know, like a naughty vibe about this jasmine. You know, like uh, the just what is it? Lust, L lush lust. That type of jasmine, you know, very sexy kind of raunchy jasmine, but in a very raunchy but in a classy way. Okay. Um, this has ylang ylang as well. You can actually smell the jasmine and ylang ylang together. There's a slight spicy sultriness about this fragrance. Absolutely divine, 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 divine. It's one of the best, best jasmine fragrances ever. Huge siage, lasts forever, projects like crazy. Like I said, most Tom Ford fragrances will last you a long time, okay? I absolutely adore it. Very sexy jasmine number fourth spot. And you know what? Surprising you guys, in the top three spots are the three cherry fragrances. I am a cherry fragrance lover and Tom Ford did the original cherry fragrance, which is coming up here right now, coming up here soon. The original last cherry, of course. I will reveal what number it is here soon. But these are top three are all cherries, actually, the cherry trio. Okay, at number th three spot, Tom Ford Cherry Smoke. I love this cherry too, but this one is a little bit darker and smokier than the other two cherries that I'm about to talk about. Oh, it's a very kind of incensey smoky cherry, but that black cherry, very sweet and juicy too. Oh my gosh, I love it. This one lasts really well, like five, six hours. Uh, it's not beast mode, but at the same time, not weak, uh, which is better than the next one I'm about to talk about. Love cherry fragrances, and Tom Ford did the original cherry fragrance that set off this cherry craze where every house, every, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry came out with cherry fragrances, which is right here in number two spot, Lost Cherry. This one was the queen mother of cherry, the original cherry, the cherry that got started, the craziness, cherry craziness. Lost Cherry, this is almondy and cherry, like cherry and almond vibes. This is what started the whole almondy cherry fragrance craze. Oh my God, it's slightly boozy. It's a little bit balsamic, very sultry. Unfortunately, you would expect the balsamic fragrance to last longer, but this one doesn't hang around too, too long. Like max four hours, I feel like two to four hours. You can respray this bottle is small enough. You can just put it in your purse or you can decant it. I don't mind you guys because there's nothing else. No matter how many fragrance houses come out with cherry fragrances, not no, nobody can ever duplicate that one in my opinion and here's number one spot drum rolls please right here electric cherry oh my gosh this is so sexy this is your this is your more tart red cherry not your dark sweet cherry this is sweet too but more like a very kind of tart like red cherry more more spring vibes, more su spring summer vibes. I wouldn't say summer, spring more slightly. That's when I like to wear this. My husband, it does something to my husband. I think there's some kind of voodoo in here. This is one of those fragrances that he loses his mind over. Um, I didn't realize he liked cherry fragrances. He didn't realize he liked cherry fragrances. Actually, on one of the videos I did with him, he, in the middle of us talking, he kept saying some what, which perfumes he likes in my collection, and he was saying how much he likes this, and he named a couple of other cherry fragrances, and we realized on camera, yeah, you do love cherry fragrances on me. So yeah, this one, he absolutely adores this one on me. He goes bonkers. He loves this. This does something, and I'm not the only one. Several of you commented down below in videos where I featured this and said it has the same effect on your husbands too. So there's definitely some kind of like pheromones or something in here, I'm not sure. Uh, this is your like bright tart cherry with a big dose of musk. It screams kind of spring, kind of almost like Japanese cherry blossom. It doesn't smell like Japanese cherry blossom, but you know like it, it type of like a, a lighter cherry that's more effervescent. 
So that is my number one right here because my husband goes crazy for it. I go crazy for it. I love it and it's a huge compliment getter. Uh, did I actually mention which ones get me compliments? Probably not. Okay, so massive compliment getter from my husband. He loses his mind completely. It has some kind of effect on men. Um, Lost Cherry, another one. Um, Noir Parfum is another one. Um, actually, Vanilla Sex, believe it or not, received one compliment, uh, which is more than I can say for a lot of the fragrances. What else have I gotten compliments on? I think that, oh, and Jasmine, Jasmine Rouge. Um, it's a compliment getter, Neroy Portofino, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if I, I'm pretty sure I've gotten compliments on maybe all of it, I just don't rem remember everything, but yeah, it was, they tend to be compliment getters, um, Tom Ford fragrances, my husband loves Tom Ford DNA, because of him I actually, at first I wasn't like, it wasn't my number one, like it wasn't in the top, but when my husband showed so much like love for Tom Ford, I kind of reevaluated, like re kind of assessed my friends. I'm like, oh my God, they are amazing. They are very groundbreaking, very unique, super, super, super uh, innovative fragrance house. So yeah, I think now Estee Lauder owns Tom Ford brand. Not sure if Estee Lauder owns the fragrances too, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but they've kept that innovative trend and they've kept that innovative gene like, alive, I guess, the innovative nature. So yeah, you guys, that is my massive Tom Ford collection reviewed and ranked in the order of preference. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my ranking? I'm sure some of you ha would rank this differently than me. Depends on personal preference there again. It all depends on what type of perfume you gravitate towards, what type of category you like the most, right? So if you like citrusy fresh ones, you would probably rank Neroli Portofino very in the very top and Sole Blanc in the very top. And if you are more like an ambery lover, you might dark fragrance lover, then you would do Tom Ford Orchid or the Noir Parfum, like you will rank higher. And if you are like a sexy perfume fan, like kind of like that narcotic, like, addictive vibes and you'd like these more and if you love a, a cherry lover then you'd rank these more you know like higher it depends let me know down in the comment section your thoughts which ones would you rank and how how would you rank these do you agree with my ranking what do you think chime down below you guys your comments really help me out also please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel which really helps me grow this community so that I can bring you more and more better and better content it gives me encouragement as well and follow me on other social media like Instagram and don't forget to hop on over to my makeup channel, my luxury makeup channel, Cleo Lux Life. It's growing really fast. Help me get past a thousand subscribers, you guys. I just started that channel. Thank you for your support. I review a lot of Chanel makeup on that channel and a lot of other high-end luxury makeup. Check it out. I will be releasing a video about the new two limited edition Chanel makeup sets soon not the chanel summer collection which i already reviewed check, check that video if you missed it on that channel but the new limited edition sets the green and pink sets it's coming review is coming stay tuned all right i will see you guys in my next video